The Silent Screamer. Words written by Matt Lindsay. Read by Ev Winter. The same sad song plays over and over. She's crying, except there are no tears. Her door is wide open and her friend is close by, but she's lonely. She's a mirror for the song playing in the background, but in the forefront of her mind, she's an addict of her own grief. Her own voice remains silent while, all the while, the story of her heart streams and screams through the melody and the lyrics across the way for any passing strangers to annoyingly catch a shadowy echo of her pain. She is a victim of a world too fast to offer respect, where the weakened are promptly forgotten by those who think they're so strong. I know not her name, and she knows not mine. But then we need not know a name or a face, for there is no face to know. We only need recognize the actions that play alongside the orchestra of discontent. Sometimes there is laughter, though short-lived as it may be. For her laughter isn't made from her contentment of being true to herself. Her laughter is instead the strongest trick in the book where her pain is undiscovered or unrecognizable to others from one extreme to another. On one hand, strapped to her sadness and discontentment, is her ego dancing about the place, lost in its make-believe world, pretending not to care about her emotions. While, on the other hand, her passionate bleeding heart floats around, weeping on a musical note. Both the ego and the self tied together, waiting for a savior, any savior, she hopes may be made of pure love. Cigarette smoke explodes into the air, as if smoking were an opportunity for her to fill in life's empty gaps. Along with a brief chat, she really only celebrates the passing of time with her only friend, yet a faithful one. The scenery is too common. In fact, it's everywhere. Stemming from restrictions and limitations of self-respect and from those who have no love to share. I see it's Friday again and both girls are dressed ready for an evening, a forget-your-worries night. It's time to let their hair down and also time to let themselves down, along with all the other mind-cluttered clowns about town. Time to get drunk, just like they always do every weekend. To then drag that well-deserved hangover around like a cloak of guilt as their reward for committing suicide to their souls, yet again. She is the guardian of her pain the protector at the reins, made from all the hurt she's got buried inside her. Confidence exists only in those areas of her life to which she is accustomed and obediently programmed, and where her working wage is the only possible goal in sight. But in her own heart there are unfulfilled dreams and unanswered questions. She is emotionally lost in deep swirling waters, where her sober mind still clings onto a raft made from empty bottles of woe. She is the only witness to every one of her own memories, but her memories are such a nuisance when they bounce in and out of consciousness, laced with self-doom and regret.